Sup guys, hey King here bringing you another manga review this week uh, on One Piece. So yeah, it's been a long time since I did a One Piece reaction or even One Piece review. And here I am. Chapter 1038 or 1038 if you will. Kid and Law. Sorry about that. Kid and Law versus Big Mom. And Kitty trying to escape. No, stop. Stop trying to escape. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> stop trying to escape, okay? Either stay in the room or stay on the bed, okay? You're only gonna take a few minutes. Sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so we start with the uh, cover page of One Piece like we usually do. We're doing a cover story, of course. We're in volume three of the cold-blooded voyage uh, where Jerma is trying to basically escape Big Mom's wrath. And uh, surprisingly, in an unexpected twist, we discovered that uh, Niji and Yoji have been captured in Chocolate Town on Coco Island. So yeah, as we can see plainly here, they're, they're in the book. They've been pinned into the book. Which is crazy, because now it brings up a very interesting uh, question. God damn it, Loki. <laughs> it brings up a very interesting question. Does Big Mom have the book on her? Is, is, it, on, is it on the ship that she came with? And therefore... Are Ninji and Yoji going to be rescued? Or are they going to be rescued during uh, the course of this cover story, perhaps? Or is, Jer or is this a hint that Jerma is going to show up at Wano and, you know, things are going to go crazy? I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But, uh, yeah, uh, and of course we can see Pudding to the side seeing this as well. So we can see in the back. So, yeah, she, yeah, clearly, clearly things didn't go right for Jerma here. And as we go through the chapter, we begin the chapter, of course. Uh, I forget where we left off. I think King got defeated and Luffy and Kaido were laughing. And then Kaido went nuts and he went through his various stages of uh, drunkenness. Trying to beat Luffy to... Well, to failure, basically. <laughs> um, and we, yeah, the chapter begins with the in the castle interior third floor where we uh, start with Raizo and uh, what's his name? Uh, Fuku, Fuku, the big ninja dude basically, I don't even know his bloody name at this point, but yeah, this, this has been the best fight so far in One Piece, man, I mean, just this fight between these two ninjas, you know, Raizo and this dude, like, it's just been incredible, man, I mean, they've just been standing there and doing their little uh, ninja signs while the fire is spreading and it's basically heating up. I mean, they're literally like, they're literally on fire at this point. I mean, they're burning to death, but they're still standing there. They're holding on. Like, it's it's a great fight of, of, of attrition, basically. You know, power of the will, if you will. Like, it's just amazing. It's amazing. Like, when you look at it, like, look at that cover, like, it, it's crazy that they're both not dead. I mean, you've got one guy saying, release your jutsu, and the other one's like, you release her first. Like, it just, it gives me vibes, it reminds me of uh, Orochimaru versus uh, Saratobi, uh, the third Hokage during that, you know, during that whole uh, part in the in the anime, basically, where we kept cutting back and forth between them, you know, as, as Saratobi got stabbed through the chest, and the sword was going in and out, and Orochimaru was like, bringing it in, and you know, you got you Emma at the back trying to pull it out, and like, you know, that went on for like a good five, six episodes, and you just saw her sitting there wondering, Man, how's this fight, how's this epic fight gonna end, man? Like, god damn, like, this is intense. And like, we keep counting back to four and it's like, wow. They're still standing there doing the same thing, like, nah, nah, mm, ah, like, it's just, it's beautiful, really, it's beautiful. But no, seri ser seriously aside, uh, or, uh, all, all sarcasm aside, this, this is, um, it, it is hands down the worst fight in this, in this, in this story arc, basically. Like, at this point, Oda is simply taking the piss. Like, yeah, he has to be. Like, it's the only thing that makes sense for me. Like, he's he's doing it, he's, he's trying to parody Naruto in, in the worst way. Like, in the most fun, worst, comedic way that he can think of. And, like, you can't tell me that if you're a Naruto fan that you don't immediately think of that Orochimaru and Third Hokage fight. Like, because like, that's what it feels like. Every time we come back to this, it's the same thing. Like, they've been in the same position for God knows how long. And, yeah, you, you expect epicness. You expect epic ninja fight, like, throwing stars and Bunshi and, uh, you know, and Shadow Clone Jutsu and all that crazy crap. No, it's just two people standing there like... Uh, 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 it's like... It's crazy, but um, 
yeah, like, it, it's just insane at this point. And then you've got the people just running for their lives, scared at this point. You know, there's dead end. The fire's everywhere at this point. It's consuming everything. You mean, you've got that big blob of crap that Andrew made, and it's just going down towards the armory where all the explosives are. You've got Yamato racing there. But this thing, it just keeps on coming. You've got ceilings cracking and breaking. Uh, you've got this one moment where obviously the ceiling's going to come down on, on the on the enemies, basically, at this point. But at this point, like, uh, uh, whether you're whether you're an ally or an enemy, like, at least depending on what floor you're on, it, it's kind of gone hectic now because everyone's sort of in it for themselves now at this point. Like, uh, a lot of people basically have uh, turned sides or are leaving the fight. Uh, at least when it comes to the uh, to the enemy side, and you got Jubei just coming in and like holding the ceiling in, so he's getting his little moment there, like, and like he's basically telling. I thought there might be a few stranglers get moving quick, like it, like it, it's crazy that Jubei is is helping these guys, like. I, 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 I'm, I'm wondering if these are part of the samurai army or not. It may, they might be, they might not be not. I'm not too sure, but like, you know, Jibei, Jibei's, you know, Jibei's giving it his all, man. Like, like, and yeah, he's wondering how the fire is spreading. And at this point, we as an audience, we know how the fire is spreading. I mean, Jesus Christ, like, it's it's that blob and there's Loki trying to scratch his way out the door. What are you doing? You're going to eat me? You're going to eat me out afterwards? You can, you're, you're, you're welcome to tear my throat out afterwards, but you sit there and you quite... <laughs> you cute little furry... Fuzzy bastard. Uh, yeah. So as we as we go through, obviously, obviously the fire's gotten to a point where a lot of people are trapped. They can't escape. We get this moment with uh, Chopper as well. Uh, and I don't know what happened here, but Chopper is small. Like he shrunk. I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened. I think he took he took a, a, a ball or something and he shrunk down. It's sort of similar to when Luffy went into like uh, third gear and he shrunk down. I think. So he must have taken something, and now he's he's tight. It's it's so cute, like 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 the way he fits in that uh, samurai helmet is it's so freaking adorable. Like they need to make a toy of plushie of that. It's just so adorable. You got you've got the you've got the reindeer nurse just holding him. That like oh my god, it's just so cute. But uh, yeah, he, he he gets no he, he goes back to normal, and uh, we get this we get this uh, interesting uh, um, uh, a dialogue. I'm back to normal. Those side effects made me wither and weak for a while. This is nothing though. I'm more worried about Zoro Miyagi. So he's turning to the goat dog that's like, his name's Miyagi? Okay, Miyagi Sensei. You know, wax on, wax off. <laughs> Respect to Miyagi, man. Uh, but, um, yeah, because remember, guys, Chopper, uh, uh, you know, he healed Zoro uh, uh, in time for his fight with King. And. Yeah, apparently there are side effects, uh, and I think we're going to see those side effects in a second. Um, I mean, Chopper himself said that, that super recovery also has a great cost, right? All the damage he suffered will come back many times worse. I hope he's won his fight already. Before his injuries were so bad he could move, if those wounds got multiple times worse. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that he's saying this, because uh, the last time Zoro got really, really, really badly wounded was when, was when he uh, was facing down Kumo, and he made that sacrifice, basically, and yeah, he should have been dead. Like Zoro, hands down, should have been dead, but he wasn't, thankfully not. But we cut to Zoro off this fight with uh, King, obviously he's still at the mountain edge. And, yeah, something interesting is happening here. Zoro's like, Zoro is, is, is down for the count, but he's looking up and he's like, who the hell are you? And we cut to the panel and it's the freaking Grim Reaper. What's happening? My body, it won't move. Stop, get away from me. And that's the last thing we see of Zoro here. The, the Grim Reaper, like literally, it's not even a freaking joke. There's literally a Grim Reaper there with a giant ass scythe about to hit Zora down. Now, Chopper, like, the fact that we just had Chopper, just just the panel go like say that there's going to be side effects, makes it very obvious and clear as day that Zora is hallucinating here, okay? There is no Grim Reaper there. Zora is hallucinating. He's probably high or out of the world right now. My prediction is this is Brooke. Okay, this is Brooke. Brooke is there. This is Brooke in front of him. And, what you know, the sight, that, that's Robin. Okay, he's holding Robin, okay? Like, whatever Zora is seeing, it's making him see the Grim Reaper. Like, he, he's looking at he's looking at Brooke and Robin, and he's seeing the Grim Reaper instead. That is my prediction for this. Um, it's, it's hands down, Brooke. It has to be. Like, there's, there's no way in hell that he's hallucinating so bad that he's seeing death itself come for him. Uh, 
it's it's hands down broke and Oda is clearly playing this for laughs like we, we had a freaking ninja reference with uh, or Naruto reference with Raizo and the fight going on what's his name and now we're getting a freaking bleach reference here by having a Shinigami or a soul reap or whatever to show up here uh, when it's clearly freaking broke obviously I know there's no Naruto or bleach references going I know that I, I, I'm just joking here guys but it, it is funny if you think of it that way it's like how, how can I pay homage to two of my uh, co com competitors oh I know what I'm gonna do here we go yeah <laughs> it's like it is hilarious to see uh, and a beautiful manga uh, thumbnail cover as well if I do say so myself but yeah things are not looking good for Zoro though to be honest like like I said I don't think it's that bad. I honestly think it's Brooke and he's holding Robin up in a certain way that makes Zoro look up as if he's got a freaking scythe in his hand. You know, that's that's what it is. Next chapter, this is probably going to get cleared up, okay? This, this, this stuff doesn't always last long, you know? So then we cut to Frankie, he's doing his thing. You know, the dome interior, right frame, part of the tower. Zoro's there and Frankie's just there outside, you know? Uh, maybe if he blows a hole through the wall, maybe he'll see Zoro then he can jump in and help that. I think what's going to happen is that the Straw Hats are going to start reuniting with each other. I think that's what's going to happen. The fact that they're sort of close in their in proximity. Uh, especially since it doesn't tell us where Brooke and Robin are uh, in this map part. So I'm, I'm wondering if this is a case of, yeah, it's Brooke and, it's Brooke and Robin and they've reunited with Zoro and they're going to help him. Frankie's probably going to smash the wall. He's going to see them three down there. He's going to jump in. We're going to probably cut back with what's happening with Sanji. They're going to reunite with Chopper. Jubei's going to come in. The Straw Hat's going to reunite. That's what I think is going to happen, guys. I, I am more interested to see what's happening with Nami and Usopp at the moment, though. Like, we have, I think we haven't seen them for a little bit. So, yeah. So, yeah, as all of this is going on, again, flames and disaster at, at, uh, on the first floor attic. It's crazy. Like, uh... Uh, it, it's just, it's just, it's just chaos at this point, and we're cutting down to the basement uh, level one, if you will, and we're seeing uh, what's her name, Aizo. Uh, uh, she's obviously wounded. Kiko, Kinemon. I hope my actions allowed the two of you to escape. So I don't really remember what happened with uh, Kinemon and Kiko. I think Kinemon's uh, lower half was separated from his upper half, and it was running away, and other characters were chasing it, maybe. So I don't know what's going on here. But uh, what's interesting is here that uh, uh, Iso encounters Cypherpool and Loki again is going for the damn door. Sorry about that. Uh, play time with Kitty over. <laughs> so wrong. But uh, yeah, we see Iso. She's encountering Cypherpool. Two of the agents are there. You got the big ass one with the with the with the long ass mask and the shorter one there. Um, I'm wondering if we wreck I think we do. I think these are characters we do know. I think that might be. Is it Blueyo? Maybe Blueyo. I don't remember the names though. But uh, oh my god, it's getting scared now. I'm trying to review this, man. Come on, like give me, give, give me, give me a few minutes, man. So yeah, we see Izo encounter Cypher Pool. Obviously, they don't want to get involved. They want to let her leave and live. They they're trying to capture Nico Robin at this point. You know. Uh, as he says, you know, we, we technically are meant to let you off the hook for being a member of the Notorious Crew, but we're currently got ice on the straw. Yeah, at this point, they want nothing to do with it. They got their own mission, they got their own task. Just, just chill out. Ah. Chill. Chill, little one. Chill. Can I, can I do this review with him sitting on my lap? Like, like, is he gonna ha hold still? But yeah, anyway, as we're going through the freaking chapter, guys, with Izo encountering Cypher Fool, seriously, dude, <laughs> relax. They're, they're, they're gonna let her go, obviously, because they got other things on their mind, but she's not having that. You know, she's, she? Am I saying she? It's a he, isn't it? I'm, again, I, I forget, man, I mean, yeah, sorry about that, but uh, yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't let them go. She she points her gun at them. Not another step. So what do I think is going to happen here? I think she's going to die. I honestly do think she's going to die. She's already wounded. She's hurt. She's exhausted. Cypherpool is either going to kick her ass right to the point where she can't move anymore, and they're going to leave her half dead, or they're going to kill her. Worst case scenario, they are going to kill her. And she'll be she'll be dead the next time we see her. She, she's basically a bloody corpse. Or they're gonna maybe capture her and arrest her as well. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe some sort of exchange, perhaps. You know, uh, her for Nico Robin. Though to be fair, it wouldn't be really be worth it, would it? But uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I don't see good things for her in the future. We cut to the basement armory. Finally, we see Yamato trying to get to the. Uh, <laughs> 
sit there. We tried to see Yamato going for the basement armory, and you got that big blob of fire having actually gotten through, and it's about to come down on the explosives. And yeah, we get this moment where Yamato transforms into a basically half form, and she freezes the bomb, she freezes the explosives. And this fire thing, it literally hits the bombs. It doesn't explode. It, it doesn't explode, though. It's, as it says, as we get the sound effect, sizzle. It doesn't explode. Yamato just saved everyone's life. And she's like, don't touch it. And she she basically tries to beat this thing now, like, one-on-one. -on -one. And we get this we get this dialogue. Uh, uh, I don't know what's going on here, but this thing has got hands now. And, oh, my God, look. Okay, that's it. You want to go out? Go out. But you're not coming back in. Go on. Go on. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> But yeah, this thing ends up having hands coming out of its body, like, and we hear Orochi-sama. I think it's the fire talking. It literally says Orochi-sama, and, and, and Yamato's like, a hand. Yeah, a hand literally comes out of there, and it hits Yamato, and she's back into a human form. So yeah, that went well. Uh, for now, it went well for the most part, do you know what I mean? At, le at, least, at least she's managed to stop the explosive from going out, but it is in the room. And ice can melt, so she has to find a way to beat this thing. And the fact that she's got ice powers makes me wonder, like, maybe she she's a good opponent for this. Though I still say maybe they should get Brooke involved since he's got, like, he's got ice abilities, doesn't he? Doesn't he? But anyway, we, we go back to the life floor. And yeah, we're finally at the part of the chapter, which, which you know, which is you know what the chapter is all about. I mean, the, the chapter is literally called Kid and Law versus Big Mom, right? And we haven't we haven't got any Kid and Law versus Big Mom, but now we're here, and Kid and Law are down for the count. Big Mom has beaten their asses so much, so much for that fight, and you've got the underlings begging her to let them go, to let them live, etc., etc., uh, and while well, telling them to get up at the same time. But it's like, no, that's not happening. And Big Mo's just like, you know, quit your belly aching. This is a battlefield. You know, she's right. It is a battlefield. You know, that emotion. They, they, there's no room for emotions. And she uses her lightning powers or whatever it is to defy the underlings and to hurt the others more. And at this point, yeah, things aren't looking good. You know, uh, you know, as she says, you better not be playing with your food, Kaido. Hera, take me to the roof. Let's finish this quickly. Yeah, at this point, a Big Mom gets to the roof. It's it's over for the alliance. It's over for Luffy because he cannot take on two Yonkos at the same time. Okay, he's busy with Kaido and he's actually doing his thing. He's succeeding somewhat. He can do it. He can do it. But if Big Mom gets there, it's done. And Law ends up using Room and and and, and mixes it with an 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 and Law shoots his sword up through Big Mom's arm. It's like this. Through the sword arm. And it goes through the sword arm up into her freaking mouth. Like her chin or her mouth or the side and up, up the other side. It's crazy. Like it's literally gone through a freaking... It's pierced her neck. And he's like shock willy. Whatever that does, you know, you've, you've got blood and stuff gushing out now from her body. Like it's, it's crazy. Like and... A chopper is there witnessing this, by the way. He's there. You know, he's like, what's with that huge blade? Like, what the hell? Like, what is going on? And Big Mom is pissed to the point where she summons, uh, you know, she brings to life the steel beams to attack, to attack Laura at this point. But then something amazing happens. The steel beams end up getting pulled back from Laura and they go towards Kid who's pulling them in using his magnetic powers. Kid stands up. And, uh, it, yeah, it's just, it's just freaking beautiful. I bet you anything Kaido is reaching his limit up there. If you give it long enough, even mountains can be, can be worn down by rain. They say you emperors are invincible. What a joke. There's no such thing. Like, it's crazy, like, Kid is, it's crazy that Law and Kid are doing this. They know, they know what a big deal it is uh, for, for Big Mom to go up to the roof, right? They know. 
they know they have to hold they have to hold their ground. They cannot let her get up there because they know that Luffy can beat Kaido. They know that. They freaking realize that and then using all of their abilities, their powers. And on it, oh man, I wish this was a color spread. I think there is a color spread of this because uh, I can't really make it out. But Kid basically, you know, he transforms all the metal or he's or his machine or whatever, whatever it is. He gets it pulled all together and he transforms it into a mechanical ball. A mechanical ball and he rams Big Mom into it. He rams her and holy god, it's it's like it's like a freaking Megazord. Like that's what it is. Like I'm looking at this and the, the only thing I'm thinking of is is goddamn have have Kid and Frankie team up and have have Kid create extra armor or 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 or, or like yeah extra armor for the freaking big mech that Frankie uses or weapons whatever because this shit is awesome like I'm looking at this and it's freaking incredible and he's ramming big mom and he's like it's a massive bull is it bigger than the, the than the big mom in a giant form yeah listen up you hag I don't care if it kills me you're not in both law and kid are saying this I don't care if it kills me you're not reaching that roof and oh man, it's just such an amazing chapter. Do I think Kid and Law are going to be able to beat be, be Big Mom? I think they'll be able to hold her off and injure her enough, but they won't be able to beat her because I do think Big Mom is going to play a role in Elbaf, which I imagine will be the next arc. That that'll be that'll be the end for Big Mom in that arc specifically. She's not going to get defeated here. Maybe defeated, but not not out of the war, not out of the battle yet. If that makes sense, you know, you know the war is over, but the but the fight isn't, if you will. But yeah, man, I feel like we're getting close to the climax of the fights now at this point. Um, I think it's just a case of figuring out where everyone now is. I think the Straw Hats are going to get to a point of reuniting while Luffy is busy fighting Kaido. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what, what, yeah, well, literally what everyone is up to now at this point. But uh, yeah, I just want to know what the hell is going on with Zoro. Because I do, I do think it is Brook and Robin there. It, he's seeing things. Like, he's definitely high as hell. Uh, we didn't see Sanji in this chapter. We didn't see Usopp or Nami. So I think I think next chapter we might get a little catch up with those two. But seriously, what an incredible chapter! Like, holy crap! Great bloody chapter. Uh, just goes to show how freaking fun One Piece as a whole is. Like, it keeps always up in itself. Like, it keeps going nuts. And I'm looking at these color pages right here, and it's like, god damn! I wish this this manga was in color. Like, it's it looks so good. It looks so freaking good. But yeah, guys, that's my review for this chapter, my review slash reaction, if you will. Uh, again, I already read the chapter and I was going through it. It kind of helps me because I, at least I get a good idea of what to really talk about. Because I do tend to forget forget things now in my old age. <laughs> but yeah, great chapter and I can't wait for next week because there's no break, guys. There's no break. We're, we're going on a roll here. Like, uh, January is over. No more, no more having to wait weeks for a chapter to come out. Like, well, we're, we're getting, we're no break. That means we're getting a chapter next week, and we're probably going to get a chapter another break, another week, and then a break, and then you know it's going to continue on. So yeah, guys, we're on a marathon here now at this point, really. But yeah, I really hope Mono ends soon. I really do. I hope you like that, guys. And as always, like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care, and bye.